Hello and welcome back to the Cricket Nerds podcast. I'm your host, James. I'm joined by Benji. How are you doing, Benji? Very good, James. Excited to have Test Cricket back, which is going to be our topic for today. Brilliant. How are you doing, Zach? Yeah, I'm doing well. You know, it's Steve Smith's birthday today. So, happy birthday to, to Steve Smith. Happy birthday, Smudger. I think um, that's the most word Zach's ever said in an intro, ever. <laughs> I think I've, got, I've got another one. It's also the... the hottest day of the year in the uk which isn't saying much at all yeah for our for our indian viewers if you just picture the um the coldest you've ever been it's about that um we're at 20 26 degrees celsius um and you've got sunburn and i, and I have i've managed to burn myself so today we're going to be talking about the first uh day of the first test between england and new zealand um safe to say it was probably new zealand's day Fantastic debut from uh, Devon Conway to finish down 136. Um, Zach, you probably were you were you watching in the background most of the day? What did you make of um, t- t- today's play? I thought if you're from New Zealand, then you're obviously going to be very happy. Um, but also, it was I kind of like good batting. Um, I'm a batsman at heart, and I just thought Devon Conway's is just class, really. He, didn't give anything away. He was solid from the word go. Um, I know he he usually plays uh, at number three. They were saying for his uh, domestic team, so opening was a kind of new role for him. But he yeah, he just slotted in really well. Took his time, played the played the good shots. Waited for the bad ball to yeah. So very good from him. Yeah, showed a lot of maturity, I think. Um, and they were saying before the match, um, the New Zealand guys, that he's definitely, you know, one to watch. He's he's can definitely make a big name for himself. Um, so yeah, to recap the day's play, um, New Zealand won the toss, and Kane Williamson decided to have a bat, which I think seems to have been the right decision. Um, Kane Williamson once again falling foul to Jimmy Anderson. Um, I think. Jimmy Anderson's now got him out seven times since he's been facing him in Test cricket. Um, masterclass from Anderson today, James. What 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 did you make of uh, England's bowling attack? Um, so as much as Zach's a, a batsman at heart, I'm probably a bowler at heart. Um, and ah, oh, I, I thought I thought they did well actually. Um, I was impressed by Ollie Robinson. Um, I thought he looked dangerous. He was holding good lines. Um, yeah, he, he looked really good. Um, Broad and Anderson, as always, you know, they they just they're so consistent. Um, I, I did see a you know a couple of wayward balls from from Broad, but out of the out of many he bowled, it was it was overall very good bowling. Um, yeah, I thought yeah, Robinson as a as a debutant did um, did a cracking job. Uh, to get out Latham and uh, it was Taylor as well, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they were both, you know, pretty good dismissals. Um, I think Latham was played on, but, you know, it, that's what happens when you get dangerous batting and you make them feel under pressure. Or dangerous bowling, sorry. Um, and then Taylor and LBW. Um, so, yeah, no, I, 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 was, I was really quite um, impressed with the England bowling. I thought their decision to take four seamers, um, leave Jack Leach out, uh, is quite a bold one, um, especially at Lords where you can get, you know, you can get a bit of turn there. Um, but I really don't think they need Jack Leach there. Um, I, I think it was the right decision. And they're not in a bad position hmm. because New Zealand, they didn't score that quickly. Um, it was Conway that's done amazingly. And yes, they've got two set batsmen now, but tomorrow's another day. And um, they're three wickets down and they they got that Williamson wicket, which is, that was the one I was kind of most scared of. Hmm. Um, so yeah, we, we'll wait and see, but I'd, I'd say it's it's nobody's, uh, n- nobody's really in the lead yet. Um, it, hmm. England are still looking good. I think the, mor- the morning session is key, isn't it? Because... If it's a, a overcast day, um, an overcast morning, then James Anderson will look like a different bowler. Mm. 
Ollie Robinson as well. He he does really well with the swinging ball. Um, and so, yeah, next day, anything can happen. Right now, New Zealand are definitely on top because uh, they've got 200 off for three, which on your first day is pretty pretty good. But the pitch isn't doing much. But it's pretty, pretty good for batting. Uh, the weather today was perfect for batting. So I wasn't... New Zealand just did what they needed to do. Needed to do. They didn't take any risks. They just batted how they have done for the last however many years, like two or three years now. They've just been solid, not giving anything away. Um, and England needs something to work with. And mm -hmm. if there's a bit of cloud early on tomorrow, then that might help them a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, as 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 Zach said, I think it definitely was New Zealand's <clears> day. <throat> I think they've 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 definitely shown a lot of character today, um, especially after losing yeah that Williamson wicket. Um, Right after lunch, I think they came back and fought through the rest of that session really well, um, with only losing Ross Taylor. And then Nich Nichols and Conway in that last session were um, incredible, really. Henry Nichols really accelerated towards the end of the day, um, and he's approaching his 50 now. And uh, they've still got a lot of batting to to go with BJ Watling, Colin de Grandom, Santner and Kyle Jameson. All of them, you know, can hold a bat. So... Yeah, a, a, a fair bit of a fair bit of batting left for the for for, for the New Zealand squad. I think um, that's something that England are struggling with. So I think another reason as to why England have gone with that fourth seam option um, is obviously because there's that big hole that Ben Stokes normally fills, where he can bat number five or earlier, and he can also bowl your to be that fourth seamer. So you you can pick your spinner. Um, so whereas New Zealand here have been able to pick Colin de Grandom and Mitchell Santner, you've got you you do have your two all rounders there, um, who, who and, and and then you've got that spin option in 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 Santner. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. The the bowler I'd really like to watch tomorrow is actually Mark Wood. Um, I think Mark Wood bowled a amazing spell, sort of his I, I think his second spell. Um, today it, it was it was real fast paced short pitched nothing under 90 miles an hour type of effort strike bowling which you know that to bowl 18 overs of that pretty much that that takes your you you takes its toll on you um and, and i think he was unlucky a couple of times not to pick up that wicket of devon conway um he did look look like he troubled him once or twice especially with the shorter stuff um so yeah I think it's a very finely poised match. I think it's exciting to see. Um, we've not we've not talked about Joe Root either, who who I think bowled really well as well, um, as he always does. He was nice and tidy. Um, so as you've said, it, it, do we think we can start calling Joe Root, you know, an all rounder rather than just a just a batsman? Mm, I don't think so. I think he's still like a batsman who bowls. Um, he's he's not as good as say Jack Leach. Mm. Um, I would say that England have done well in having to bowl third. I think if they were to bowl last, then they'd want that spinning option, like a Jack Leach. But I think but when you're bowling third, even if they don't catch up to New Zealand's target, they can still make the most of it with their four seamers. Like Mark Wood will probably, if the pitch is a bit more broken, it will probably be slightly more dangerous second time round. Um, so they've got... I don't think it's a mistake not having a spinner. I know some people were suggesting that, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a mistake. I think it's just a case that New Zealand have batted well and England's bowlers uh, have tried their best. That's that's all they can do. Yeah, yeah go, going back to what you were saying about Mark Wood as well, um, I think you know with the likes of Ollie Robinson, um, Stuart Broad, and Jimmy Anderson, they're all like they're all very similar in terms of their pace. So. You know, getting getting those set batsmen used to those paces, and they're still swinging it like nobody's business. They they you know they're definitely not easy batsmen to face. Um, and then Mark Wood comes in, and he's about you know ten miles an hour quicker. It's he is really showing his class. Um, he's looking really good. Um, so yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And I think it's just it's so good to see Test cricket back. Um, it's good to see fans there as well. You know, I think um, great efforts have gone gone into it. I know that because I'm going to see the um, the second test in Edgebaston, 
and the amount of like COVID tests that you have to have and a whole rigmarole of booking it, it's uh, mm. quite a faff. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be good to see that. Uh, it's, it's just good to have the fans back, isn't it? For sure, yeah. It definitely, there was definitely that electricity out there today. And I think it was really special for Devon Conway, especially on his test debut at Lords, um, to be able to get that century, his maiden century, in front of that crowd. Um, and to get on the Lords Honours Board, which, you know, not many cricketers can say they have done. Um, well, actually, from Zealand, though. He's, he's South African. Well, he is a South African, yeah. So. And, and we don't allow South African players playing for the England team, so I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's never happened, has it? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's only been in New Zealand for uh, three or four years. Hmm. But as soon as he joined Wellington, he's been smashing it. Like, he dominates all the bowlers in the first class game, in the one day game and 2020s. Like, he's. He's a really dangerous batsman. He's one of the people I mentioned in my um, thoughts of who, who could go to Rajasthan. You did uh, as a replacement, an injury replacement. He, and he, yeah, he just he's just consistent. His highest score in first class cricket is three hundred and twenty seven. So he's known to play the beginnings as well. Yeah. Um, and when you've got, and also he's a keeper. And when you've got DJ Watling, who's been a mainstay in New Zealand team for years, and he's about to retire at the end of the summer. Have him come in, just like this is what they need. You, you you saw actually from him just a bit of his stroke play early in the day, when he was sort of just playing these almost like forward defensives. They 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 they, they weren't even like full like cover drives. It was just like a forward defensive <laughs> check drive almost. And like the ball was racing away, and 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 he got a couple of fours doing that. It just looks mm. a very very tidy technical, um, yeah, excellent batsman. Great timer of the ball. Um, what do you think then? We've we've mentioned the importance of the first session tomorrow. New Zealand will be looking for to get up to that three fifty four hundred mark. I imagine um, that'll be their like main aim for the first couple of sessions, um, and and to lose as few wickets as as, as possible. England obviously will be trying to get that early wicket. Um, yeah, is 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 that really all that England need to to do now to to sort of take control of this game again? I think the last thing you're going to want is to be is to have New Zealand five down at T. They want to have them all out by T if they can, or at least eight or nine down um, to stand a chance of still being in the game um, and have a chance of winning it. Uh, quick, quick one before we end. Do you want to know what um, Kane Williamson's favourite thing about playing at Lords is? What is Kane's favourite thing about playing at Lords? He said it was the lunch. Well, there you go. Well, to say his test average in England is below thirty, I think. I think that's that a lot. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll end it there then. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, please uh, comment below. Um, tell us anything. Tell us why you hate Benji. Um, tell us why he's a terrible umpire. Um, anything like that uh, please leave a like on the video um, and follow us on all social medias we are at cricket nerds pod um, yeah see you next time goodbye Bye. Amy LBW it just wasn't out <laughs> <laughs> we need to clear the air um Zach, I think it's time that we just say that all his umpiring mistakes in our game yesterday. So, yeah. so today, guys, we're going to be talking about the first day of the first test between New Zealand and England. Um, safe to say it's probably New Zealand's day. Uh, Zach, what do you think about it? I just think you should give me out. <laughs> Right, come on, boys. We can do this. Um, 